I've tried three of the most popular Bluetooth keyboards. Let me break it down for you. So first up, the Apple Magic Keyboard, which I've had for like four or five years. I liked this one a lot at first. Looks good, felt fine, charged with a lightning cable, which is great if you already have anything else Apple related. And it was a really good battery life. It was something like two to four weeks is what I got off of it. But notice I said it felt fine. That was about it. It didn't feel really good. Like you wouldn't type on it and be, oh man, this is one of the best feeling keyboards I've ever had. But it didn't feel like, uh, you know what, this keyboard actually doesn't feel that great. It just, it felt fine. I think I've actually got more cons than pros for that keyboard. So, number one, it doesn't connect to multiple devices. All the other keyboards that I've tried, you can click a button and switch from, let's say, an iPad to a phone to a Mac to a window, whatever it is. This one doesn't support multiple devices, meaning you'd have to go into your settings, unpair from one device, go into your settings on the other, pair it to that one, and then do it all again to repair. That's not a problem to have in 2021. You should be able to just click a button and it'll switch from one to another. Complaint number two is it wasn't a backlit keyboard, which I didn't think mattered until I went back to using my Mac and typing on that, my MacBook, and typing on there using that backlit keyboard, especially at night when it's a little harder to see. And then I went back to the Magic Keyboard, which had no backlight, and that's when I realized it needs to have a backlight keyboard. And then con number three, as I slightly mentioned earlier, was the feel. It, it feels okay. It doesn't feel great, it just feels okay. And for the price of either $99 for the regular one or $129 for the keyboard with the number pad, I want it to feel a little bit more than just okay. The Logitech Master Keys. This one was actually an amazing keyboard. The feel of the membrane keys when you're typing on that from one of the very first presses that I had, I, I was thinking, oh wow, this, this thing feels nice. It just feels smooth. That's the easiest way to say it. It just feels smooth. So typing on the Logitech Master Keys was a great experience. I say was like it's over, but it's a great experience. It charges with USB-C, so that's a plus. It is a backlit keyboard, and it's not just like a regular backlit keyboard. It changes during the day. So when I have a lot of lights on, the keyboard is either not backlit or very, very dim. And then once it gets darker, then the backlight starts getting brighter and brighter. And if you, I wanna say the standby time is like 10 minutes, so if you don't use it for about 10 minutes or so and you're not near it, the backlight will turn off until you bring your hands close enough to like you're going to start typing, then the backlight keyboard turns back on. Really cool, love that feature. It also connects to up to three different devices. So it's one button you click and you switch from your iPad to a Mac or whatever it is, one button. And it looks really good in the space gray color too. I had the master keys for Mac specifically. So that one comes in space gray instead of black. And the space gray is the same space gray that's on the MacBook Pros. Now for the cons. So I don't know if this was just me or if other people have had this issue too, but one of the biggest reasons why I stopped using the Logitech master keys was because I was having Bluetooth issues. And I know the M1 Mac mini was having Bluetooth issues, but I had a 2015 MacBook Pro at the time. So it couldn't have been, at least to my knowledge, couldn't have been the same issues that that machine was having, but it would just constantly disconnect. And then you'd have to wait a minute to three minutes for it to reconnect and then you can use it. So it, it was just getting super annoying with all the disconnecting and I've never been one to like slam a, a controller or throw a controller or anything like that, but I've slammed that keyboard multiple times just because of you'd be in the middle of typing something or go to edit and do a quick command something and then there's nothing. So it got super annoying. But again, that could have been just I have an older computer, so maybe I was just asking too much, pushing two displays, and then trying to connect to the Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse, so maybe it was just my computer, but whatever it was, it pushed me to look at other keyboards, which is how I refound the Keychron. I had the K2 for a very short amount of time, and I really liked the number pad option of the K4. Now, unlike the other two, this is a mechanical keyboard. So think old school. Like I haven't had a mechanical keyboard since like 2002, 
while on my gateway computer playing Lego Island and backyard baseball. So it's been a while. The mechanical keyboards are thick, are loud, and old school looking. I'd put it, I'd put those three as like the top three. You can get a low pro version, so it's not, it doesn't have to be thick, but usually that's what you're gonna find. Thick, loud, looks old school. What I really liked with this is it's backlit. The options for the backlight are plenty. I think there's 10 different options. You can click the little light button in the top corner and it'll change the way the light looks on the keyboard. You can get it in RGB. That's just a little too much for me. I'm not too crazy about RGB as you see all the lights around here as well. So maybe I could have done that one, but I didn't think I needed it for the keyboard, especially if it means I could save a little bit of money. It can connect up to three devices, just like the Logitech. You just click a button and it'll switch over to it. It works with either Windows or Mac. So you can pop off the keys, put on these Windows keys or pop them off, put on the Mac. So whatever you need, you can switch it out. You can also switch out colors. I've seen some people online switching the colors of the keys which a black and white one actually would look really good with this setup here. Chargers with USB-C as well, and battery life, it lasts almost as long as the Logitech. The Logitech definitely has the best battery life. Can't remember offhand, so I'll just put them in right now. Um, but the Logitech definitely gets the best battery life, in my opinion. The reason why I wanted to try the Keychron is, one, the sound. I Something about the sound. I, I just really like the sound of the mechanical keyboard. Two was the feel typing on it, it just feels different than typing on a, a regular keyboard. And three, it just looks cool. You know, I kind of like the contrast of the old school look with all the newer technology. And it's adjustable, so you can change how high or how low you actually have the keyboard. It's the only one of the three that can do that. On to the cons, however. Really, the only one I could think of is I don't like that the keyboard turns off after 10 minutes of not using it. So the Apple keyboard, when you're not using that one, I, I don't actually know how it stays connected, but it doesn't like go into power save or anything like that. It just knows that you're not using it and knows when you go to reuse it and there's pretty much no delay. The Logitech, there might be a one second delay if you haven't used it for 10 or more minutes. At most, it's a one second delay. The Keychron turns completely off. So you have to wait one to three seconds, which doesn't seem like much, but just imagine, you're editing a video, haven't touched the keyboard in a little bit because you're using the mouse, then all of a sudden, you go to Command B, Command B, ah, keyboard's not connected, okay. One, two, three, four, reconnected, Command B, now you get back to work. See, so it doesn't sound like much when you just say three or four seconds, but when you're actually in practice and using something, that's when it gets annoying, especially if it happens often. You can turn that power save feature off, so that way it just, it doesn't turn off at all, but it doesn't turn off at all. So instead of the battery lasting weeks, the battery will last days. So if you charge it every day, that doesn't matter if you charge it every couple days, I guess it doesn't matter. Or you can turn the power save off when you're using it, turn it back on at night. But see, the other keyboard, you didn't have to come up with these solutions for the battery. It just worked. This one, you have to get a little creative sometimes. Final thoughts, starting with the Apple Magic Keyboard. I like this one, but as of right now, it's not one that I usually recommend to people. Reason being, for $99, it doesn't have some of the basic features that you would expect in 2021. Specifically, backlit keyboard and multiple device connectivity. However, in my opinion, it's due for an update soon. So who knows if maybe in a couple months, there's going to be a new Magic Keyboard, a Magic Keyboard 2, that has those options. Backlit capability, um, multiple devices, maybe even Touch ID. At that point, it would be awesome if it could stay the same price, but I'd probably expect it to be closer to 149, 179. I don't know, it's just guesses right now, but I think it's due for an update, so I probably wouldn't buy the Magic Keyboard. It's, it's outdated especially for the price. The Logitech Master Keys, I really like this one. And if I didn't have those Bluetooth connectivity issues, I probably would still be using this one right now. This is the one that I suggest for most people. This is the one that I've got my dad using right now. If my mom needs a keyboard, I would suggest that one to her. Uh, my sister's got this one. Most people, this is gonna be the best keyboard for them. One of the best keyboards for them. It's the same price as the Apple keyboard, 
but you also get the number pad. If you compare it to the Space Gray Apple Magic Keyboard, that's $149. This one is $99, and you get more features. So, I like that. The Apple one, if you wanted to stay on brand and have everything Apple, then I'd stick with the Apple ones. And then lastly, the Keychron. This is the one that I'm currently using now. I just, I really like the sound. I really like the feel of it, the look. Typing on it is more of a fun experience. So what I've actually noticed is I feel like I wanna type more. So I'm typing longer emails and typing longer notes because I just wanna keep pressing those keys. So for me, that's a plus. I can get over the 10 minute power save feature and figure out a solution for that. The Keychron is my choice. If you like a mechanical keyboard, I would highly, highly suggest the Keychron. It comes in a K2, so it's no number pad. The K4, which is what I have with the number pad, and a K8, which is a low profile version, so it's not this, you know, thick, beefy thing. It's low profile like the Logitech and the Apple keyboard. That's my thoughts, and those are my top three wireless keyboard options.